welcome back. Sorry, uh, it took so long to upload the last episode, but it happens. But now we're going to continue on here from the Fire Club with our newest deck, the Water Deck. Now, I did win a few more battles and eventually got Blastoise twice from the Evolution Pack. Now, why Blastoise is so good is because of his Pokemon power, Rain Dance. As often as you like, during your turn, before you attack, you may attach one Water Energy card to one of your Water-type Pokemon. This doesn't use up your one enemy energy card attachment for the turn. So what does this mean? So, this literally means that as long as you have, uh, let's say you have three energy on your Blastoise, you would want to, ha you can put down three energies and then a fourth one down on whenever, whatever Pokemon you want. So what happens if you put down an, uh, another one on Blastoise? Well, this can infinitely go on plus one for the whole duel. Now, of course, you obviously don't have that much. You don't start out with that many cards, but there are ways to improve your chances. And things to do that are obviously the trainer cards like Bill, in which it draws two cards for one card. So essentially you get Bill, which means you play, if you play four Bills during the game, you play the card, you get two more cards out of it. And the good thing about Bill is that you've now essentially used, or at least have, three cards. You have a three-card advantage on your opponent because you've played one, you've drawn two, and then this can go on until, obviously, you end the game. An energy Search basically replaces your water energy, uh, some of your water energies. You play your Energy Search, you get it, done. Energy removal is great for simply stalling your opponent just in case you draw, let's say, into seal and only seal and then a bunch of water energy and then you draw an energy removal next turn. It can actually save your life in a lot of these games. Um, now, I have four gamblers. I choose to go with the four gamblers instead of four Professor Oaks because the gambler shuffles the things back into your deck. Now, if you play Professor Oak, you realize those cards are just simply gone. Yes, it's a guaranteed 7, but if you have things that you need later on, for example, you have two Blastoise in your hand, and you don't have any Squirtles on the bench, and you have a Dugong in your hand, or a Dugong on the field, well now, all of a sudden, if you use Professor Oak, you lose it, and then you also lose the advantage, which is kind of disappointing, to say the least. Um... So that's why I don't use it. Right now I use one recycle. I'm probably going to get rid of that and just trade it off for the last bill. Because um, I didn't want to do too much grinding. Um, but this is the deck that I recommend you go with. It's literally just Squirtle, War Turtle, Blastoise, 4, 3, 2. Um, you don't really need more than that. 4 Seals and 3 Dugongs. Um, energy wise, it's just all water energy. You don't need anything else. Um, the fight, the ground deck, we're going to be using it a lot. Now, the next deck that we're going to do is we're going to do the Bulbasaur and Friends deck. Simply because now that we have all of the fire energies and all the fire guys, we might as well use it. So we're going to put it all into Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. But I like them the best. Um... Another good one to put it into is Magmar, specifically the level 31 one. Um, I find it better than the level 24 one, just because it's really good. Um, there's no real need for anything really else besides these guys. Um, you, what you really do is you just go into throwing your bills. You put in two Pokemon Traders. Put in your energy searches, your energy removals. Um, we'll go with a couple Pokeballs here. I don't have any extra Gambler, so we'll fill that in with Recycles for now. A couple Potions. Um, a Full Heal, because you're probably going to get stunned a lot. And then just a lot of Fire Energy, really. Um, there's no, there's no real need for anything else. Because, you know, obviously, you, there's nothing really in my deck that uses anything other than the fire type energies. So, let's see here. I'm gonna save real quick. 
So after defeating Ken, come in here. Just gonna go grab the email real quick. Have you collected many cards? Obviously, this information is useless because we've already beaten him. Um, but hey. So, we're gonna head on down to the grass club now that we have the. Uh, now that we have the fire deck. And the Grass Club actually doesn't look too bad. I like what they did with this club. Uh, Master Miki is out right now. Where'd she go? That's a secret. If you defeat the three members of the Grass Club, she'll tell you. So in other words, you have to defeat all three of them. And the third one is not in this room. And I'll show you where she is right after this right here. So we're going to first face off against Heather. I'm going to play Charmander because Charmander is the only guy I got. Hopefully, she just plays Grass-type Pokemon right now. She has not. She has gone into a Ditto, which is good and bad. I'm going to search for Charmeleon. I did not get it. That's okay. I'm just going to hit Ditto. Pound for 10. Whatever. Now, the problem with the Fire deck and the Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard deck is exactly what just happened, is that I had to discard an energy from Charmander. This is why the deck isn't considered really good. Um, it's just... it just exists. And it's really just to counter the Grass-type deck. There's nothing really good about it. There's nothing unfair, which means it's not great. Um... And that's the problem with a lot of them. Um, I know people who don't actually play Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard. They just go Growlithe or Ponyta. Um, I can say with all honesty that if you're going to go Ponyta, put Eevee and Flareon in. Because they also use the double color colorless energy really well. Um, instead of Magmar. Same thing with Growlithe. So you can really have two types of decks here. You can have Growlithe, Arcanine, and... Uh, just simply Eevee and Flareon, or you can go with what I'm doing here, Charmeleon, Charizard, to, uh, you know, Magmars. Now, the Grass Club, it's probably the easiest of the three clubs, I would say, in my opinion, to start out against, which, because they give you the Fo Charmander and Friends deck. Um, so I actually find it much easier to play against this club very early on. Because you get Colosseum right away, and they have some other cards that aren't necessarily... Um, you know, Grass-type, and you get the gra uh, you know, Charmander and Friends, so you don't always have necessarily, you know, get stuck with, you know, burning off energy. Now, for this deck, I only recommend you evolve Charmeleon either when you're getting stun locked into something or when you have just an abundance of energy or you need a win condition really quickly. Um, Charizard is kind of like your last ditch effort because of his ability. And his ability, yes, is nice in the fact that if you use double colorless energy, you get two, but then you have to discard two, uh, two energy to use his attack. Well, the double colorless energy only counts as one. Eh. Eh, exactly. So, it's really only used... So, let's say your opponent throws out Venusaur, and, your Charme and you have a Charmeleon on the bench with a ton of energy on it. Well, you can now come back and immediately Oko pretty much anything in the game. Um, because it does 100 damage. So, what does that mean is that... This is a really, really solid deck. And when it comes to revenge killing things, however, it's not so great if your opponent has a way to revenge kill your Charizard. So this is where this deck has its bad points versus its good points. Um, I usually try and play with uh, as many things to make the deck as consistent as possible. 
So Pokemon Trader is great in this deck because you have a lot of Pokemon that need to evolve and need to uh, get rid of that kind of ghastly. Um, need to evolve quickly, but also be able to deal some damage. And the smoke screen is just like, um, you know, more C's in the sense that uh, if you know, they flip a coin, heads, they can attack. If not, you know, etc. So this is where recycle is really good, and I just got double bill, bill value. So I'm going to start loading up on Charmander here. And really start putting on the pressure off of my Magmar to win me the game, because I'm pretty sure Magmar is most likely going to get knocked out. Or she'll switch out Machop. One of the two. Okay, so I now have an I now have enough energy for my Charmeleon to come in, but I want to knock out this Machop first because he's done no damage to my Magmar, and I have a lot of resources when it comes to what's n not necessarily in my hand, but what I can do in terms of flexibility in case I need to switch out to another Pokemon or or whatever. Okay, another fire energy. That's good. So she goes into her Charmander, and she's probably going to use Ember to kill off this Magmar here. Let's see, I'll actually load it up on this Magmar. And he's po she's poisoned, which is great. I'm going to make this go by really quickly. So, the thing about poison, I, don't, I never think I explain this, in between every turn, um... Like like the other like the other things with the exception of paralyzation. Paralyzation is really the most deadly thing in this game because you can get stun locked. Um, every turn you end up doing ten damage. So when it goes to my turn to her turn, she takes ten damage. When she goes from my turn her turn to my turn, she also takes ten damage. Well, then people go, well, that's essentially 20 damage a turn. That's a lot for poison. Yeah, it is. It was kind of eh, unbalanced, I'd like to say, back in the original game. But obviously, I'm pretty sure they finally balanced that out with actual, you know, ways to remove poison besides the full heal. Um, ways to deal with these massive amounts of... Uh, damage being done relatively quickly. Um, I know one card that does that now is Hypnotonic Laser. Hmm. Is what poisons people for the most part and it pretty much knocks out a Pokemon. I'm going to grab another Charmeleon here. And I've pretty much won the game, in my opinion, because I have two Charmeleons loaded up fully, ready to go with a, a 30 damage attack and I don't have to worry about it. She has her Charmander out here. I don't know what it's going to do, really, effectiveness-wise. Because I'm just going to get rid of the thing on Oddish. So, if she goes into Viola Plume, I don't have to worry about it. I can just knock it out really quickly. Alright, so. Really quick turn, really quick game. She goes into her own Magmar. It's a, it's a decent card. Very nice. Finally poisoned. So in between the turns, she gets take she takes ten damage. She receives another ten damage before it becomes my turn again. That becomes really, really nasty and hard to deal with. So I'm gonna load down with another Charmander. Gonna do an energy surge, grab it out of my deck. And this is what you really wanna be dealing with all your decks eventually. Is you wanna be searching throughout for everything. So that you don't have to worry about it. And he's poisoned, so he goes down, and I win. Alright, so Mew, Flareon, Double Colors, Energy, Primate, Meowth, Ammonite, Drowsy, Execute, and Mysterious Fossil. And we get the other half of what was originally going to be my grass deck, which was Nidoqueen, Nidorina, but hey. 
So she tells you that she is most likely at Ishnara's house, Ishara's house, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go there next time. I'll see you then.